Hi, um, I'm Emily. I'm a junior here and a philosophy major, actually, so I spend a lot of my time thinking about stuff. Um, <laughs> so as a result, the existential crisis has kind of been an issue in my life. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about what it is, why it matters, and what to do about it. Um, and I know that a lot of you probably don't have like really any experience with philosophy or you may not even be interested in it, right? But this is actually an issue that's super relevant to your life right now. College is like a big turning point in your life. You're making a lot of decisions that impact literally the rest of your life, right? The careers that you're doing, the people that you meet. Um, and this is when these big questions, these existential questions, really come up and become relevant to you. So you might be asking, what is an existential crisis? Um, and I think it's helpful to think of it in this way. So there's this dream that I have. And in the dream, I'm laying in bed, and I, like, I think that I'm awake. <laughs> and then I like, realize that I'm dreaming, and it kind of freaks me out. And so I'm like, trying to wake up. I try to move. I try to open my eyes. And like, it keeps not working. And I'll think that I've woken up, and I'll realize that I really haven't, right? <laughs> and so this kind of like, it freaks me out. And it fills me with a sense of like, panic and anxiety. Um, and an existential crisis is a lot like this. So like, the dream was real, right? I really was sleeping. I really couldn't wake up. Um, and there wasn't anything bad happening in it. So like, there wasn't an ax murderer, no one's under the bed. I'm just freaking out about like regular things, like in a regular dream when I would also be asleep, right? <laughs> so in an existential crisis, it's like these facts of your life, these existential structures, they become clear to you and they become an issue. So you have a crisis about it. You feel panicked and anxious instead of just accepting them like you normally do. Um, and there are three like, major issues you might come across and that would lead to an existential crisis. And the first one is powerlessness, the second one is isolation, and the third one is uncertainty. So powerlessness is the sense that like, there are things I cannot control and things I can't change. Um, and like a pretty easy example of this is circumstance. So you don't pick your parents, you don't decide your ethnicity or your sexual orientation. These are all things that like no one really even decided for you. They just happened, right? They're just like a fact of your life. You were born into them. You can't do anything about it, really. Um, and it doesn't matter how you feel about it. And another big issue here is time. So we can't control time. How you feel about time doesn't change it. Um, and so aging can be an issue, right? Like the midlife crisis. Um, and I actually had a personal experience with this. So um, I was kind of a strange child, and the day before my 10th birthday, I was like, kind of freaking out about it. And I'm like, I'm standing on my back porch, I'm staring out into the fields behind my house, I'm being really dramatic, and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about turning 10. Like, do I want to turn 10? I kind of like being nine. Being nine is pretty chill. And being 10 is a big commitment, because it's double digits. And like, once you're in the double digits, you're in them for the rest of your life. You can't go back. So I was thinking about it, and I was like, what are my options here? And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to turn 10. I'm going to have to tell my mom I don't want a birthday party tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm like gearing up for this and I'm thinking about it and all of a sudden it hits me. Even if I don't have a birthday party, I'm still going to turn 10. I just won't get presents. <laughs> and so this was a really big issue for 10-year-old Emily, right? Or nine at the time. Um, but this is true about your life, right? You don't pick your birthdays. You don't get to decide. And this is the feeling of powerlessness. The second big issue is isolation. So this is Taylor Swift, and the lyric here is, I'm standing alone in a crowded room, as we can all see. <laughs> but we're all kind of Taylor Swift in this way, because we're all kind of like stuck in our own heads all the time, even surrounded by people like you are right now. Like your thoughts are your own, and there are things that you come up with and that are yours, and your identity is kind of like stuck on the inside of you. So like even if someone could hear all of your thoughts and see everything that you did and know what all of your feelings were, they still wouldn't be you, right? They would experience that through themselves. So this is like a form of isolation. You can't communicate yourself fully. Um, like, there's nothing you can do about that. And I think this really hits people when they start to think about death and they're like, when I'm gone, like, what can be left of me? I can't leave myself behind, right? So like, this is all I have. Um, and this feeling of isolation can be really difficult. Orson Welles has this really like depressing but great quote about it. Um, and he says, we're born alone, we live alone, we die alone. This is the feeling of isolation. So it's pretty intense. And then our third big issue here is uncertainty. So a really easy example of uncertainty is religion, right? It's something that you believe in, but that you can't prove. 
<laughs> and when you get down to it, like, you start to realize that that kind of applies to everything. It applies to reality, it applies to morality. Um, and these issues of uncertainty can be really difficult. So this is our friend Nietzsche and his fabulous mustache. Um, and he came up against this issue of uncertainty. And he has this famous quote. He says, God is dead. <laughs> So he's like, he's looking at it in the face and he's like, I don't even know what to do about this. Um, and he actually, you know, he comes to a nice conclusion, but that's still a difficult thing to think. And I had a professor who, um, my first philosophy professor, I actually had him as a high schooler, but it was a college class. Um, and my very first day, he like holds his arms up and he's like, pretend I'm holding a baby in my arms. And we're like, okay. And he's like, now what's stopping me from throwing the baby out the window? <laughs> and we were all like, well, there are a lot of things stopping you, right? It's wrong. There are laws against it. Like, there are plenty of reasons not to do it. And he just kept asking these questions. And you get, when you get down to it, you realize, like, there's no, like, beautiful fundamental force that would, like, if he let go of the baby, it wouldn't rescue the baby, right? It would still happen. So there's not, like, this, like, proof here. It, morality is something that we believe in. And when you start to have uncertainty about it, that can become an issue. So all of these three issues can lead to a big feeling of meaninglessness. Um, powerlessness, isolation, and uncertainty all make you ask big questions that can lead you to this feeling of meaninglessness that's really at the root of the existential crisis. Um, and so the big issues can arise from this, right? You find yourself asking, what's the point? Why? Why should I do my homework? Why should I get out of bed? You get depressed, right? Depression, you lose this motivation to like, do simple tasks, like regular things. You're like, why should I brush my teeth if nothing really matters, right? <laughs> and so it's like these big dramatic responses to like regular things, um, and that can lead to seclusion, right? You don't feel like hanging out with people. You don't feel like going out. You're like, I'm just gonna stay in my room on a Friday. I can't communicate myself. Why should I go to the frats? Real questions. <sighs> um, <laughs> and so like this existential crisis can cause big deal a big deal for you um, and it's like it's good to think deeply and fully about your life but when you're having an existential crisis it's difficult to really live your life fully so you might be asking like what can I do about an existential crisis if I'm having one right like how can I cope with this the first step is acceptance so like, you have to realize that like powerlessness and isolation and uncertainty are all just facts of your life there's nothing you can do about it and whether you feel good or bad about them they're still gonna happen so acceptance is the first step and once you've accepted them, you can move on to making meaningful choices. So when you make a meaningful choice, you assert your free will and your identity, and you like create the sense of self and value in your life, right? So you make yourself as a person. Um, and you might still be asking, well, like, I mean, you know, if I can't be assured of meaning, like, what does it really matter? How can I make meaningful choices? Um, and I think it's really helpful to think of it in this way. So I actually, I was really sick for a while, and I was on this medication that had really weird side effects. And so I had auditory hallucinations for two weeks, <laughs> which was really fun. Um, <laughs> and it mostly just involved, like, I heard my phone ringing all the time. I would hear someone knocking at the door. And like, I would go look, I would go check and see, and like, no one would be calling me, no one would be at the door. And I was like, looking at my phone, and I could hear it ringing, but I could see that no one was actually calling. Um, so this was a really weird experience for me, because it was like, I was coming up against things that like, weren't real, but they felt really real to me. Um, and so like meaning kind of functions in the same way. So meaning is like someone's knocking at your door, right? But you can't open the door to check. So you don't know for sure. And just like when I had those hallucinations, I like I had to check every time because sometimes someone really was calling me. Someone really had just come over and I needed to open the door or I needed to answer the phone. Um, and so like I never really knew. I was stuck in this like level of uncertainty. Meaning, if you accept it as if it's real, right, if you treat it like it's a real thing in your life, because there's no way to be sure, then it can function in your life like it really is real. So this is a perspective change, and changing your perspective can legitimately impact your experience. So just to recap, if you're having an existential crisis, and you're coming up against these questions of uncertainty and powerlessness and isolation, you can deal with your feelings of meaninglessness by accepting them, right, and making meaningful choices and changing your perspective to make these things possible. And that's all for today. Thank you. <laughs>